ultimately wanted to bring this back before you for a discussion uh, surrounding those street widths. And then also you'll notice that Center Avenue uh, north of First Street North, there's a lot of discussion about a sidewalk being installed along the west side is where it was proposed to provide access to the ballpark. Um, as a result of those discussions, we've uh, shown, at least on this map, as that sidewalk being eliminated. So I guess the, the first item um, surrounding this is any input that council has on the street widths, and then second would be relative to the sidewalk on Center Avenue North. Um, if, if you notice on the map, most of those streets that are proposed at 28 feet, um, that would be uh, basically they're, they're 24 right now, but as you all know, when you drive along there, there's the edges of the street are deteriorating because people drive off the edge of the pavement, particularly when you meet a vehicle or if somebody's parked there and you need to go around. So the, the change is really four feet in width. So um, I think that's a, a good, it'll still function well for city maintenance staff, for emergency vehicle access, um, but it'll still provide a safe, safe roadway and um, it's a reduction from the 32 feet. So. I think it's a very accommodating adjustment. Correct me if I'm wrong, the residents that lived on that street did not want the sidewalk, correct? That seemed to be the discussion at the meeting, for sure, you know? So, I mean, ultimately, you know, council has to decide whether or not a sidewalk is um, prudent leading to a ballpark, but um, that's definitely the consensus of the, the people that showed up at that meeting that evening and they didn't want that sidewalk. The only thing to add about it, at the meeting, there are a lot of people who are worried that they were going to have to end up being assessed for part of it, and so they would like to cut everything possible. But right, yeah. That's why I wanted to bring it to a council workshop so that you guys can, you know, plans and specs are authorized, but um, I just want to make sure that we're starting on the, with the right groundwork or framework so that we don't bring a uh, plan set to you sometime next spring that shows the street width a different than what what you guys are thinking. So, I think the main thing talking about that sidewalk where we're going to have a curb there. There's curb proposed on all these streets. Oh, yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. I think the main thing on the north end was um, Cal Ralston was concerned about how close it would be to his house and garage and stuff. So I'm not sure how, without, you know, actually measuring it and putting sidewalk, I don't know how, if, if it's going to be on top of his, I think that was his concern. And again, that was the street that was proposed to meet the city's minimum requirement, right. 32 feet, and now we've reduced it to 28 as well, so. Yeah. Yeah. Is this making this um, Charity Lane and Second Street? Is that making that a through road? It is. Can can we not make that a through road? We can do whatever council wants to do. I just, I mean, they they were having issues with people driving through there because it's basically right between two yards where the little access is, and they were having issues with people driving there. So then they put the rocks up so that people wouldn't drive through there, and I don't really see a point in why we need a... And the people who live there specifically asked me if I could bring up not putting that as a through road, the two properties that are right next to where the road is because they don't want the extra traffic of people trying to cut through to go to Jackie B's or wherever. But it makes it so much easier for us to plow snow because we get complaints and then in the winter from those same people that were piling snow in their yard. Mm -hmm. And actually on the north side of the road, in that little jog, it's city land. Yeah. So, I mean, their, their yeah, exactly. yard yeah, doesn't start until down the other ways. Mm -hmm. That's all city. Yeah, from the fence over. <clears throat> I just, that's what they had wanted, and I, I figured I would bring it up because they had asked to not have that happen. Um, 
So we've talked about it for many years about making that a through street mm -hmm. just for now that we've owned that property for the simple fact that it's such a nightmare for the guys to try to we used to get yelled at every winter for piling snow in people's yards <laughs> what, what's the eventual uh plan for that little corner property there do you know i don't think there is a plan there isn't for that. there's a drainage uh stormwater that goes through there yeah there's yeah. an easement the first 10 feet or 15 feet well we put a stormwater there's a stormwater tile or whatever yeah. you want to call it that goes right through there so i just think there is any other plan right now it'd make it a lot easier if that was a through road as far as plowing yeah well yeah I, I understand that and and i brought that up too when when they had talked to me but they just they had, had asked that i bring it up so we go over the truck and you get their cars parked at the end of the driveway and you can't turn you around and go back all the way back up. In driveway. i mean then we go back up And if we're going to redo the street, this is the time to actually do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm Jared. There, I had a. I think I mentioned this to you once before too. And someone talked to me about can we move the sidewalk on First Street South to the north side of the street instead of the south side of the street? Because that walking path it jogs at Center Avenue makes that crossing to yeah the so they were wondering if it's possible to move it over to the other side i said i didn't know yeah no that's something certainly we could look at okay. doing design but i think okay. i think we definitely want to maintain a sidewalk you know from center east out to buffalo oh yeah yep, yep. 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 No, whether, so whether whatever it side it's on yeah side, yep. We can, yep. we can take a look okay. at that okay yep. would that mean eliminating the current sidewalk and just taking that out and then replacing it with the on the north side because that trail comes down as far as center on the yeah. north side so you just need a yeah that's good or the yeah, I think, uh, the I mean, based on the lack of um, objections that I'm hearing, I think we'll, if that's all right with council, we'll just look at reducing those street widths to 28 and eliminate that piece of sidewalk and mm -hmm. keep, keep the thing moving forward. So then the second uh, part of my memo this evening <coughs> is regarding the pavement management plan that was just approved in August. Um, that's the last sheet in your drawing. You'll notice, um, and I've had actually some conversations with residents about First Street North, it's, uh, it's beyond uh, the mill and overlay stage. Um, that would be, I would not recommend that because that would be a, a, honestly a waste of money to try to mill and overlay that and expect that thing to, to last longer into the future. So uh, I guess the point of discussion here is relative to the timing associated with that. We have a the 2021 downtown, that's a, a good sizable project. Uh, First Street North is definitely um, adds additional length and work to that. I guess as we've talked about it at staff, uh, those are really, so First Street North, Second North, and then Emerson between First and Second. Those are basically the last roadways within the community that need to be reconstructed. Um, as we discussed it, you know, the, the prices right now are unbelievable. They're really come down. Uh, interest rates are decent. So we at least wanted to, to throw that out there to council and see if that's something that we should consider adding to the 2021 20, downtown project. Because as we discussed before, we're not 100% confident that that whole project's going to get done in one year. You know, we have we have things that we have to um, accommodate, like mantra days and, and any other events or things that are going on. Um, certainly, the entire project area will not be ripped up at one time. There'll be phases. Um, Every road at the exact same time. <laughs> yeah, that would good, not be good. Good luck navigating. Yeah. So. We wanted to at least present that to council. Um, I think that one needs to 
be done worse than <laughs> the other ones just with how bad especially leading up to where Emerson is just all of the potholes it just it's it's horrible yeah. um, and that one I mean even if that could be done first might be a good idea too because that's as long as they keep the parade route the same which I think you guys are planning right that's where the parade either is going to start and or end okay. um, for Montrose days so okay. if we could get that part of it done first I think it would be really nice and Maybe you're talking about that little square too one. Emerson yep. second. yeah yeah second first okay, like first all the way to yeah first second three. center yeah. first and, reconstruct. and when we talked at staff level when we talked at staff oh, level too we said no you know the cost of of mobilizing all the equipment for this is I mean it's a complete reconstruction but it's not that big of area so if, it just makes sense to include it all one time because you have to pay to mobilize everything. So if you're going to pay for it twice to be mobilized, and also if depending on the cost, if we have to bond for it, there's costs involved in bonding. So you might as well do it all as one project, and then you don't you're only going to have that cost once, rather than having it twice. Mm -hmm. So do we know the extra cost for adding that? No, no we don't know yet. I, unless he knows, I have no idea. Wasn't the critical part the well, one kit they all dealt to buy uh, garment and stuff like to that. get done because of the <coughs> cost share with the county or the township rather? The county. Great. Right. Yeah. Yep. As long as we start the project so that they know we're doing it. Yeah. They'll, they have it budgeted. They'll pay us for it. Yeah. Okay. Because I was going to say that first, that'll probably kill most of the summer there. Or how much do you think you get done? In one year um, it all well it all depends on the contractor right and the reason that we had talked about potentially not having the whole thing done in one year is because that gives flexibility to the contractor so that they can bid it as aggressively as possible that's really the thought process there if a contractor um, came in and wanted to do that whole project in one summer I think they could get it done it's just giving them enough time so that if they only have one crew that they can dedicate for the entire summer, sometimes that's more cost effective for them than sending three crews and getting it done in a month. Mm -hmm. Can we uh, put a due date on there? You know, in a lot of communities I've seen where contractors will come in and they'll dig up so much and then they're gone for a month. Oh no, that, some other job no, and stuff. That, uh, we'll have interim completion dates and basically that means once they start on a portion they have a certain amount of time to get that wasn't that in the original finished. timeline we had the last time we talked about this too i thought there's a timeline that we had in there of once you start this where they're not going to start anything else after x point so that we're not left for the winter time with no road yeah we discussed that not wanting to have a section of roadway that's unpaved throughout the winter yeah, because that would be brutal. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you can tell the contractor they have to maintain it, but at the end of the day, <laughs> you know that doesn't happen. Yeah. So we just can't risk that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never seen a project where they didn't put together Gantt charts in advance. You know, yep. you know they nailed down the dates. So, yep. yeah, I think we need to take advantage of the economies of scale here. So, so probably at a subsequent council meeting, then I'll bring the. A resolution um, with an amendment for the original approved uh, facility or the preliminary engineering report. Um, in the meantime, you know we'll we'll look at getting that survey scheduled on the south portion and um, just keep the thing moving so that we can hit keep hitting those dates that we've always mm -hmm. talked about. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. When do you plan on sending out for bids after that's approved then? Or? Yeah. So. That's a good question. The next, the next step in the process is we'll get the survey information, um, and then we'll develop the plans and specs for that. Before we go out to bid, we'll bring the plans and specs to the council, and uh, you'll need to approve them and authorize advertisement, which will set a date for the bid opening. I'm anticipating this is just based on that original schedule, which is probably about a month off now just because of the discussions surrounding the street widths and things of that nature. Um, but I'd anticipate sometime in May or June we'd probably be looking at getting bids for the project. So, yep. 
And then once we do get the bids, those bids come to council. If they're, you know, we'll review them and provide a recommendation. If they're too high, council doesn't have to move forward. Ultimately, you'll see this at least twice more, well, three times more before there's a contractor on board. And then once the contract's awarded, that's really the time when there's no one turning back. Because mm -hmm. once you award a contract, then the city becomes obligated. Mm -hmm. So you have three more three more looks at this before you, you need to make your final decision. If we were to get bids in May, how quickly do you think that if you award a contract at that point, they'd be able to start? The next month or two months? Oh, uh, typically if council awarded at their first meeting in May, they could start at the beginning of June. You know, and again, if that if we set that schedule up flexibly, they may want to start in July versus June. Mm -hmm. You know, just depending on how they're balancing their workload. Oh, mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, unless there's any other questions, me, that's all I had this evening. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. Okay, on to budget. I'm going to move up here to the table with you guys. <coughs> so the first thing in the packet under the budget, I've got um, the revenue budget worksheet and the expenditure budget worksheets. Where we sat down, um, I did some, Wayne, and I did some of them together went through and figured out what we wanted to see for the year, what we needed to have to operate the city. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions. I can hit a couple highlights. Um, we did budget in, um, in the general fund. We did budget for website maintenance because we talked about redoing the website. So we put $10,000 in our general fund and 5,000 in the EDA to have our, our um, website redone. Hiring somebody maybe to see about doing that for us. Of course, there's always the um, Ray County Sheriff's Department. There's an increase every year. Um, a couple other things we did in the 401 fund, which is our capital improvement fund. Um, we're, putting, we're putting money in there to start with all these projects and that, that were included in the pavement management report. Then all the streets coming forward are coming up in the years that need to be done. So we're starting to put money away in there. Um, so in the 401 fund, we do have a couple of things um, significant. We need to look at getting a new server. So we budgeted about 35,000. Um, I'm thinking it's going to come in a little bit less. But just to be safe, we put 35,000 in there. What we don't use will just stay in the capital improvement. Our server is running on Windows. Windows Server 2012 and it's going to be outdated and no longer supported starting in January of 2022. So we'll need to replace it in 2021 so we don't lose any support. They generally last about five years and ours is beyond that. <laughs> so, um, I don't think there was anything else really big. We left, we left the $80,000 in um, if you look under, I think it's on page 14, um, we left $80,000 in the street repair and maintenance, even though we won't be doing any streets other than the big project, we left that in there because this parking lot out here is in dire need of being paved before someone loses their tire in the parking lot. So we put some money in there for that. Other than that, it's pretty much the same as every year. Um, I just I just a couple of questions. Um, is there, are there not going to be any kind of any elections or anything next year? Is that right. why they budgeted for zero? Yep. Okay. I'm yep. just, I was just making sure. Well, we only have elections on even years. Yeah, so I, didn't, oh, yeah. I didn't know if there was a school board or anything like that. We don't that. pay for that. School pays for they that. They do? Yeah. They use our building, but they pay for it. Um, what, why is the, the newsletter we won't, the year to date is under 1400 right now, but next year we're planning on 7,000. Is that just the increase of homes? No, because the year to date only goes through June and we only do them quarterly, so we didn't have the bill yet. Okay. So if you double that. So if you look at last year's, we were at about 5,800 last yep. year. So um, 
I just figured with the new with more new homes. More homes yeah. and everything. Yeah. yeah. And we never know about postage, how much it's gonna go yeah, up. Yeah, it's gonna go up or not. Yeah. Um, why is the miscellaneous so high year to date this year? What and what caused that? Um, also in, in general the, uh, in the general fund? Under the yeah, under the treasurer. Uh, without sitting here looking, I believe it is four thousand dollars for the freezer for Ray County Community Action. Okay. Mm. Is part of it, and the other part was um, I think it off the top of my head. So I know there was four thousand for that. Yeah, I was I was just curious. It, yeah. it uh, I, I saw it, and I'm like, okay, I know we had a couple things we approved, but I just I couldn't. There remember was one other stuff. thing I can't remember what it was we had to. Brought the laptop in here. Wendy, could you explain why the, uh, like on the first page of the new budget worksheet, uh, the LGA varies so much from 2020 to 2021? Was that $202,000 a fixed number? No. Or it's a, yeah. no. So all I did was this year, so generally um, you try to get away from having your, your local government aid or your LGA support your general fund. Because at any given time, the state can say, oh, we don't have any money and you're not getting any. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to slowly wean the general fund out of that money and put more of it in our parks, um, like our park development fund and our capital improvement fund. So that's why I dropped it by another 100000 this year to get okay. it out of there. Okay. Yeah, so we can put 150 in there so that we can start getting that shelter built. Yeah. Um, why, why is the travel expenses, I mean, way higher predicted for next year than it is for... In where? Uh, it's under the EDA. How can I explain that? That's because, um, you know, I'm starting the process to go after all these. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be making several trips to Plainfield, Illinois, back and forth. Okay. So somebody has to pay for that. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I figured that's that was part of why it was. I was just yeah. making sure that that's why we are. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just saw it. I'm like, whoa, we went from zero to no, <laughs> five thousand. We asked okay. for that, so we didn't get caught with our pants down on yeah. our ankles. Yeah. You know? And the other reason why I was able to drop some of the money at LGA down in our general fund is because of the franchise fees. So the franchise fees are coming in now, and we can put those in the general fund and use them um, so we can put more money in our capital improvement fund for parks and for streets and stuff out of the capital improvement fund. And we're using some of the franchise fees as well for when we have to make repairs and mm -hmm. update our water and sewer, or uh, the water treatment plant, right? Nope, this is just for streets and just parks, for streets. basically. Okay. Yep. That's starting again, though? Yeah. yeah. I, I saw it was a, another year of decrease percentage-wise. Yeah, this so. sheet that I forgot to put in the packet that I handed out to everybody that was left on the printer when the packets got run. Um, if you look at that, it's, it talks about um, because of our tax capacity being increased. And I actually estimated our tax capacity probably lower than what it's going to come in at. Um, last year from 2019 to 2020, it increased by 17%. And so basically the 2021 taxes are based on the valuations from 2019. And we built 30 some new homes in 2019, so it should increase actually more than 12 percent. But I wanted to be conservative. So if you went with the 1,391,245 for the levy, based on my 12 percent increase projection, the tax the tax rate would actually go from 50.95 percent down to 48.2 percent. So the tax rate would go down. Now the only way you'd have an increase in your taxes would be if your taxable value of your home went up more than the 12%. Mm -hmm. Then you should see an increase in your taxes from the city. So but the if overall city tax rate is dropping by mm -hmm. almost 2%. two and three quarter yeah. percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and it'll drop even more for the final if our tax capacity is higher. Mm -hmm. it, you could see it come down even more than that. Good. I'm, I'm glad to see that, especially with, you know, everybody's very concerned with how things have increased because of the county and the school board and everything. Yep. So. Yep. No, um, with what I have in here, with the, the 1391000 um, it puts it puts money like $500,000 into our capital improvement fund for street repairs going forward, so we don't have to worry about um, where the money's going to come from to fix the streets that are in the payment management plan from year to year. So we can keep building it, and then um, we still can put money in the regional park fund to get that shelter built, mm -hmm. and hopefully get a matching grant <laughs> if we try again. So. Um, it's, it's conservative, but it still gives us money to, to be able to fix stuff. And a little bit of flexibility in case something yep. happens. Yep. Yeah, and hopefully the county commissioners are, have, have not spent the $7 million they were getting from Excel Monticello new plant like they did the year before that hurt us too, because we had to absorb all that. Exactly. I did, um, I, in there, I don't know if you noticed, but I did do a couple I grabbed a couple properties and just um, looked at last year's tax rates, taxable market value versus this year's. Some of them were out there, some of them weren't, I just guessed at them. Um, from what it looked like, there wasn't a lot of increase. Some of them were as low as like 2 or 3%, some of them were up to 7%. So, but I don't think they have all the final numbers in there yet. But as you can see down here, I wrote like what the taxes would be. It's really hard to read what it was before. But I wrote on there what it would be. So like a couple of them were decreases, and one was a eighteen dollar increase for the year. Yeah, and that's because they had a twenty thousand dollar value increase yeah. on their own. Yeah. So um, if it's if my calculations or if my estimates are close, um, people should see either flat or very very little increase. If any, it might even be a decrease in their taxes. Anybody have any other questions or concerns? Or? That's good. No this will be this will be on the um, September council packet because it has to be the county. So the preliminary one has to be the county by September 30th. So I'll put this on the agenda. Um, if everybody's okay with it, I'll just put it in. There's a couple numbers I have to move around because I heard back from Excel finally. So there's a few things I have to move around, but the bottom line is going to stay the same. So if you're all okay with that, I'll put it in the council packet for your approval um, at that council meeting. Okay. Now we're going to propose a 12% increase. Pardon? We're going to propose a 12% increase? No. No, no. Oh, a 12% increase dollar-wise. Yeah. But it's but, only, but it's a, yeah. it's a 2.73% decrease in the tax rate. And that's the date, the tax rate is what, how you figure your taxes. And the tax rate is actually going down by 2.73 percent because of the market value is going up. Another word. Let me shut the camera off. I just have a question real quick. Um, 